This is Twit. All right, we got another call for help. This is uh, pre-recorded. Uh, Donna from Austin, Texas. Go ahead, Donna. Okay. Hi, Leo. This is Donna from Austin, and I'm really interested in how to choose and how to use a VPN. Mainly, I'm concerned about security on our Apple devices. I have two iOS Apple devices, and we have two iMacs here at home, and we do all our financials online. So I have always thought that a VPN would be a good idea, but I don't really know which one to use, and I don't know how to use them. And I also need it to work with my Apple Watch. Okay, I can show you how to do that, but let me say it will not make you more secure. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're, if you're in your house and you're doing all this stuff, the, the, you know, the, the one area of insecurity would be your Wi-Fi network. Make sure you tune out, turn on WPA2 encryption. That's all you need to do. That makes it secure, as wired is. Yes. And when you're transacting with a bank, with Amazon, even when you're doing a search on Google or visiting Facebook, all of those are encrypted over and above the conversation. So you're as secure as you can be when you're in your own home. Exactly. The reason why you'd want to use a VPN would be to, to change your location, mask your location, right. so that uh, if someone was collecting information on what you're doing online, they wouldn't know where you're at. Right. Uh, or uh, to kind of like fake out uh, maybe an ISP is to tracking well, what you're doing online. Yeah, where. lately after the House's, or Congress's vote and the President signed a bill that basically retracted privacy controls on internet service providers. Now, I should point out, those controls hadn't really taken place yet anyway, so everything is as it has been all along. Which uh, wasn't great to begin wasn't with. Wasn't great, uh, but I don't think you're going to have a great experience in using a VPN full-time in your home. It slows mm -hmm. you down, mm -hmm. maybe 50%, maybe more, depending on the VPN. It will restrict you from some services. Netflix won't wa let you watch Netflix on a VPN because they can't verify that you are who you say you are. Our chat room, same problem. We won't let you use a VPN because mm -hmm. people use VPNs to hack, to attempt to hack our chat room. And so we don't know who you are. So there's a lot of places you can't use a VPN. But if you're on an open Wi-Fi access point, if you're at a Starbucks, if you're out and about. In the airport. In the airport. You should remember, whenever you join an open Wi-Fi access point, you're joining a network with many other people on it, and anybody else on that network can kind of see what you're doing. Now, once again, anything you do on Facebook or Google or Amazon or your bank or almost any shopping site is safe. It's encrypted. It has its own level of encryption. Even yes. your email is encrypted. If, you have a, if you're using Gmail or any decent email provider, both the password and the actual email transactions encrypted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're safe. If you wanted to take one more step, you could get, you know, you could buy, uh, here's one of our former sponsors, Tunnel Bear, very popular VPN service. Uh, you, you have to pay them a subscription fee. Uh, it's not, uh, it used to be you'd have to run some software uh, on, on a site to, or on your computer rather, to use a VPN, not anymore. All computers have VPN capability. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way to do it. People do it also if they want to watch uh, TV in other countries, like the BBC. But that's one of the reasons Netflix blocks VPNs. Yep. I use, this is what I use when I go around, and I've shown this before, but I want to show it to you again. This is from a company uh, called Wi-Fi Consulting in Washington, D.C. This is their tiny hardware firewall. And in fact, I have another one that they make. They make a variety of these devices. And this one's cool because it would go on your keychain. Yeah, very small, pocketable. Right. You could plug it into uh, one of those batteries. This is another one that's plugged in and running off of a battery. This would run all day on just a pocketable battery, or you plug it into your computer, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is this device, and I'm gonna show you how to use this one, the littlest one, because this is the easiest to carry, will take the internet access from the coffee shop and connect you to it through this device, which is then connecting through a VPN or a VPN and Tor, which will anonymize your stuff. So let me show you, I'm gonna plug this in, plug it into my laptop. It's gonna take a little while to boot up, so. Uh, we'll have to be a little bit patient because this is it, what's in here is a little computer, but mm -hmm. it's a very cheap, slow computer. So it takes a couple of um, maybe two minutes to boot up. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, just keep it plugged into a battery, you know, all day, and mm -hmm. then and then charge it up at night. When I'm in a hotel, often this is the setup I will use, and I'll just leave this running. All of these devices allow multiple connections, so your phone can connect. You said you wanted your watch to be secure. It can connect through your phone and. 
directly. Your, all your computers, you can usually have at least five devices connected to this. Once it is booted up, let's see if it's, uh, if it's going, I will see a new Wi-Fi access point. I've named this one Roadhouse. So as soon as I see Roadhouse, we can do it. Not yet. So we're going to give it a little time to, uh, to get online. Once I see Roadhouse, I'll log in. I've set the password. Uh, it comes with a default password and a default name, something like A-G-Z-Z-Y-Y-K-K-K. -K -K. You'll want to change both of those for ease of use. Uh, still booting, so I should have just left it plugged in. And again, the reason why this kind of slows down what you're doing is because, as you said, it's a small computer. Not always the most user-friendly if you're doing this daily in your home, but if you're on the go, this really makes I sense. It's kind of a way it. to keep you a little yeah. more secure on the road, right? I do recommend it. All right, now we're seeing Roadhouse in my Wi-Fi. I've already logged into it, so I don't have to enter the password. It's just another Wi-Fi access point. But you control it through your browser. So I'm going to log in to my Wi-Fi configuration. This is actually the configuration in a little web server running inside that little USB dongle. I can configure the wireless, and when you first arrive, you're going to want to configure it for the Starbucks or the hotel wireless. You're going to give it the password if there is one. It can join captive portals. It works fine for that. And now, you can see I have a VPN and a proxy. I am going to, in a quick action here, connect to the internet, and then, which I've done, but let's do it, and then it's going to connect to the internet, and then I'm going to go through the VPN. Now, Real quickly, if I do, right now we're on a high speed internet connection that's going to give us almost a gigabit. Now that I'm configured on a, v, on a VPN, let's, uh, let's connect to the VPN. You're not going to get speeds like that. It's going to be 1 20th the speed, mm -hmm. but it's going to be anonymous and it's going to be secure. One other thing to consider is the VPN, you got to choose carefully because they see everything your ISP would see. So we'll go real quickly to IP leaks. Uh, ipleak.net. It'll tell us our address and some information about our connection. And because we're on a VPN, I'm not going to be coming anymore from Petaluma, California. I'm coming from Colorado on a VPN server running at fdcservers.net. That may change from time to time. Mm -hmm. That's not consistent, but that's what you want. I have a new IP address. If I now surf the net, I appear to be coming from Colorado and everything's encrypted. But remember, the endpoint has the same access that your ISP does. Do I trust Comcast less than I trust FDCservers.net or TunnelBear or ProXPN? You got to ask that question. Do they? You want one that won't log stuff that you can trust? This is this is kind of a hard choice to make. Yeah. Either way, you're leaving a trail. It's just who has the it's trail. Who has the trail? And what does the trail look like? Now we could do one more step. First of all, let me do. Let me really quickly just run a, a benchmark. We'll go to Fast.com. That's Netflix. Uh, speed tester and you can see I'm not getting anywhere near the thousand megabits per second I no, should be getting definitely it's not. more like five megabits per second uh, it's it's considerably slower you want to see it get even slower let's turn on the Tor Tor now routes my traffic not only through a VPN but through a number of onion routers all over the world to an to try to attempt to anonymize my traffic if you watch our subject or uh, interviews about Tor you'll understand that only a state actor who could see all of the internet would have any chance of seeing who you are. Or perhaps somebody with a uh, corrupted Tor exit node. If you would happen to use that exit node, you might be coming out at FBI headquarters in, in Virginia. You don't, you don't really get to choose which Tor you're on. Um, now I think I'm on Tor. Let's see if I go back here. If I am on Tor and I refresh this, I will not... It's kind of fun. I will not be... Uh, I will not be at uh, I, uh, Colorado anymore. I could be anywhere in the world. Last time I used this, I was in Egypt. Oh, okay. Yeah, anywhere in the world, wherever that Tor exit node is, and that's somewhat random. And we can see how much even oh, boy, slower is it, slow. it is now. <laughs> because oh, you boy, is it slow. Uh, I'm not even going to try an Internet speed test. It, it, <laughs> I don't, yeah, it's fast. So, <laughs> in other words, you can do it, but you give up. Uh, and uh, you give up speed, you give up performance, you may give up connectivity to some sites, and I should point out, you may not have as much anonymity as you expect. Yeah.
because that you're at the mercy of, you just kick the can down the road. Yeah, you really need to be thinking about what you're going to use this specifically for. If you want, if you're doing something online that you literally don't want people to, to, to be able to know is you, like your ISP or something, again, not watching Netflix, not logging into your bank or whatever, then that's what this is for. This isn't a, basically just to have set up in the background I for every single day, thing yeah. you're doing day in and day but out. But I don't that's think it's a good. bad idea to, to use this if you're uh, uh, at an open Wi-Fi access point and you're, and you're concerned, you know, about who might be snooping. Yeah, if you're a road warrior, you're traveling a lot, this this yeah. makes sense. This is uh, the Wi-Fi consulting folks run Hotspot VPN, but they often have a new system that they're now using that they claim each person has their own VPN server and they claim is considerably faster. So that might be worth uh, taking a look at. This router is a lot faster. These routers are much higher and hardware uh, than the little USB dongle. Uh, yeah, I, I've mixed. Do you use a VPN when you're on an open Wi-Fi access? Um, you know, I've tested a bunch, but uh, not on not a regular day -day. not on a regular yeah. basis. I mean, being frank with you, if I'm you know in an airport or in a coffee shop or whatever, I just don't really do much on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, and I definitely don't do anything that I'm sensitive about. Yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> you'd have to be really uh, paranoid to want to use Tor too, because and uh, you know if you're a whistleblower or you're a dissident in a country where it's not safe to be a dissident. It's nice to have that capability. I really, I really like this device because it's so small. It, it, it's easy to set up. Once you've got it set up, you saw it was fairly quick to. It's great to have the option. Yeah. So I hope that helps you, Donna. Uh, just judging from your question and where you are, I would say you're fine. Just make sure you use a Wi-Fi password. That's the most important thing.